Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So two things, sorry about the darkness, my lights are being weird, so sorry. And second of all, I hope I'm not yelling, you guys might want to turn down your volume. I can't fucking hear in one ear, so that's just fantastic. <coughs> and I still have got off, so we're just on track for being okay. Um, I wanted to get out a video, uh, but my focus has been you know, all over the place because of this ear infection, this cough, me dealing with stress with my work, how everybody's not on the same fucking page, so that's just great. Um, but I did want to get out a video, and there was a question that was emailed to me that they didn't feel comfortable enough to drop into the uh, comments, which that's why I gave out my email. Um, and it's an interesting um, and difficult topic to talk about, so I am going to put a trigger warning in here saying that uh, dealing with loss and miscarriage, if this video is not for you, please exit and feel free to watch another video. I have done two other videos about this, and I just haven't really talked about the whole grief process, uh, along with being in a, an abusive relationship. So I'm going to leave that warning here. I will also put a trigger warning in the title and description. Um, so the question was, how did I deal with mi um, miscarriages at a such a young age? And the truth is, it it was very, very extremely lonely. Um, I'm going to tell a story that um, now that I look back about uh, about it, it kind of makes me smile. Um, but so okay, <sighs> the first miscarriage I was I had was at 15 and. But that I was alone. I didn't have anybody in my corner. I wasn't that far along, um, you know, and I was just coming to terms with it and dealing with the, the, the shame of it. You know, I was 15, pregnant, uh, in an abusive relationship, um, you know, I, we, I've heard about those 16 and pregnant shows and teen mom and all that. And I honestly was shit scared to talk about it with my family, to admit that I was having sex at such, such a young age, even if it wasn't consensual. Um, and then I, uh, ended up miscarrying and it was a different type of shame. Um, you know, I, yes, I was afraid to have a kid at such a young age, but I also was imagining it, um, of like, you know, what type of mom I would be, um, how I would do this, how would I continue schooling and all that. And I was already starting to love the baby. And, you know, some people might say, oh, well, you know, it wasn't a baby at that stage, um. But to, to me, I was already starting to love this baby and no matter what, I would protect this baby and it turned out I couldn't protect this baby. I could barely protect myself and the grief process was me just being numb to it. Um, I didn't really want to fully come face to face with it and... Um, the second time, um, so TMI guys, uh, gentlemen, if you're watching this, excuse this, um, my hormones were all over the place and, um, my period was very irregular, um, because my body was under so much stress of the, um, you know, abuse and whatnot my period was basically non-existent. Um, it was kind of like a hit and miss, but, um, 
I knew something was off just the way that I was, you know, the smell of food and I was having weird cravings. And so I went to my best friend and my best friend's a guy and I asked him to come with me to the drugstore to pick up a pregnancy test and the why, why I went to him was because like I mean we knew each other since we were five he you know I think he knew something was up with me just the way that I was acting and you know um you know how I became a lot sadder and he, he didn't say anything but he I could tell he was kind of, not, not that he purposely was judging me, but it was kind of like, he knew I was having sex, um, even though I didn't go into the, um, you know, explanation of that it wasn't consensual, um, and that it was potentially multiple, um, that, that's a conversation you don't really want to have. And, um, but, you know, he, he went with me on our lunch break, walked with me to the store, got the pregnancy test with me, and walked out. <laughs> and we walked back to school. I just shoved it in my backpack. And, um, yeah, he didn't really say anything about it, but I could tell, like, his face, he was... I don't know if he was pissed or just like, this is awkward because I know my best friend is, you know, um, doing the, um, the McNaughty and the Devil's Tango and all that. So that was, you know, and I remember go going home and, you know, he was asking me because we were walking home together after school. He's like, oh, are you going to take it? Blah, blah, blah. What are you going to do and stuff? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like, yeah, of course I'm going to take it. And... I took it and the so on a pregnancy test if there's two lines it means you're you're pregnant if there's only one there's not mine was one solid line and it was the second line was like barely visible so I, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. Um, so I just told him it was negative, but I had a feeling it was positive. So what happened was I was with my, uh, one of my other, um, friends at the time and we were ch doing this, this joke back and forth. And like every week we would, I don't know, this was childlike behavior every week one of us would come up with a joke and on Facebook um I said um week three in this um yeah week three in this joke like week three was my joke right and my ex um took that as I was pregnant and told his mom and then his mom got in contact with me and was like oh why did you put it on Facebook I was like what the fuck are you talking about what and she's like well we need to go to a clinic we need to get this checked out I was like what the fuck are you talking about and she's like you're pregnant I'm like how what like I was like well did they follow me to the drugstore she's like no you put it on Facebook I'm like what the fuck did I put on Facebook um and That was like shit scared because she got in contact with my mom and um about how she was taking me to the clinic and all that stuff and um the <clears throat> um anyways. So that was a whole thing. And, um, anyways, I got blood work done and it came back negative, which was fine, whatever. We, uh, moved on from that. So, um, 
And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I ended up not being pregnant. So it was like, um, at that time, however, um, the group took it upon themselves to kind of like, you know, that it was, it was a possibility. So a few weeks later, <clears throat> um, I could tell something else was up, like, with my body, and I was like, okay, well, maybe it was all of that, um, and, like, before that, so, during that whole fiasco, um, I, and TMI, guys, I ended up having my period, so that just stated that, oh, hey, not pregnant, so this was, like, a few weeks later, like, six weeks later, or whatever, um, and I ended up uh, taking another pregnancy test and finding out that I was pregnant then. Um, and so this time I was like 17. So this was like literally two years after almost. And I knew then that I had to protect this baby. Um, you know, but, um, I think the guys could tell, my abusers could tell something was up, just the way I was acting, and they ended up, you know, giving me a good <clears throat> pushing around and uh, punching and whatnot, and I ended up miscarrying. And I was absolutely 100% devastated. Not that I wasn't devastated before, but I think that was more you know, immaturity and just shock the first time around. I was 15 at the time. Um, and I was absolutely devastated the second time around that I blamed myself. Um, you know, that I wasn't a strong enough person that, um, you know, I would... It just shows that I would have been a bad mom and all that stuff. And it didn't help that, um, it so happened, uh, that the brothers got another girl pregnant and they kind of flaunted it in my face. And this girl was like really older. It's, it's a whole situation. Um, and they flaunted it in my face that, oh, look she can give us a kid, but you can't type of thing. And they kind of, like, rubbed it in my face and just made me hold... Like, it It was just a disgusting behavior of that. Like, I wasn't worthy and all that stuff. And I would have stuck to being a mom and blah, 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 blah. And, um... I... Um... I couldn't really process everything that was going on during that time. And, you know, when years later, when I started processing all of this and coming to terms with, you know, my miscarriages and having to face that. And it was, it was devastating because looking back at that person that I was, it wasn't my fault. You know, they did these things to me and, you know, nobody helped me. You know, people could see that what they were doing to me and nobody helped me. And losing two babies at such a young age in the way that I did. Not saying I'm not saying that, you know, comparing anyways. I'm, I'm just saying through my trauma, the way that I processed everything, again, was not a healthy situation. And dealing with the uh, trauma from the abuse, um, on top of everything, it was a whole guilt trip that I put on myself. And I think a portion of that is why I did the drinking and just the whole self-sabotage of I am too much makeup and cutting off all my hair. And I lost my identity, you know, and I lost these two babies that could have been a, a big what if you know yes I was very young during those times but it was like a big what if you know what if I these two kids survived what type of life would I have and 
I needed to grieve that life. And for me, I'm not saying that this is what, you know, magically everybody has to do. For me, I needed to grieve that life in order to process my trauma. And it's not, you know, this... I didn't have a support system. I didn't have anybody to lean on during that time or talk about my feelings and whatnot. And even when I was, you know, going through all my trauma and, um, you know, processing and all of that, I couldn't really lean on everybody, anybody, you know. And I... I honestly... <sighs> It is the most, I think, loneliest thing you can deal with in process. Even if you do have a partner, a, a support system, you kind of carry that weight, that guilt. It's because y you feel like it's your fault. You know, you are responsible for this child or children. And it feels like your body betrayed you. And for me... I lost them to a trauma. I was beaten and um, thrown downstairs and, you know, just completely um, <sighs> broken. My body was broken and you know, it, it it still saddens me to this day because, you know, I still, in, in, in those moments, you know, I kind of think of like, what if, you know, where would I be? What would my life consist of if these two beautiful souls survived? And I don't look back and feel, uh, you know, uh, shame anymore. I, I look back and I smile and even though I'm sad, you know, I know that I would have been a good mom and, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I am still young and that I am hopefully still capable of having children one day. And <sighs> and, you know, just, just because I lost you know, those two, two children, those two babies doesn't mean, you know, I forget about them. No, that's, the, that's not the case. I will always carry them with me. I, you know, I think about them daily and, you know, moving forward in life, you know, you know, they're, they're always going to be a part of me. And, You know, the, there's, there is going to be always this question of, like, who would have they been, you know? And, but that doesn't mean I have to be stuck in the past either. Moving forward doesn't mean, you know, I'm, I'm forgetting about them or I'm forgetting about my trauma. It's working through your trauma and being able to heal and move on with that trauma, if that makes any sense. Um, again, this doesn't work for everybody. Everybody deals with their trauma differently. But for me, I couldn't start to process any of that until I started to accept what happened to me and actually, you know, process it. And that meant processing everything and not just seeing the fault in me. I had to accept the situation and that I was given and just stop beating myself up about it. Even though, you know, some days I still have that slip and I beat myself up and blame myself. It's, it's not this cookie cut type where it's just like, okay, you dealt with it, move on, or you didn't deal with it, and 
blah 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 it, it's not very cut dry it's dealing with a lot of things and you know this is just another part of my trauma that I had to endure at such a young age and even though you know I did I had to endure this endure this sorry um <coughs> God <coughs> doesn't mean sorry that I you know I can't have a life if that makes any sense you know a lot of people say you know oh you're stuck in your trauma that's that's not true I am I have decided to accept my trauma, deal with my trauma, and move forward with my trauma. I, it's always going to be a part of me. There's always going to be a history there. There's always going to be a story. And even though using the word story sounds kind of like fictional or non-fictional, doesn't mean that it's not there, you know? And it it is um, it is scary to look back and see what I had to deal with during that time, you know, and for five years, a little over five years, and I'm proud of myself. I'm sad, and I want to go back in time and hug myself and let her know she is strong. And even though, you know, you hope, you feel hopeless, there's not, you know, there's going to be bad days moving forward and there's going to be good days. And, you know, there's going to be tears and laughter and sadness, but you're going to be okay. And... Even though, you know, as I sit here and do these videos and talk about trauma and the different traumas that I've dealt with, it, you know, I'm not going to sit here and compare my situation to somebody else's because that's just not who I am. And that's totally unfair. Everybody deals with stuff differently and, you know, you shouldn't compare yourself to people or situations because that's just not fair to you or to them um but you know I do these videos so you know people can see how somebody you know deals with trauma compared to another and maybe they can take something from it or you know they can feel not alone because I know during this time when I was dealing with these two miscarriages, I was very alone. I was young and very alone. And for me, that was the most scariest and hardest thing I've dealt with personally. And, you know, not having anybody there. And, you know, if somebody wants to reach out to me through this and have a conversation or you know, tell their story, I am more than willing to listen and be your support system and know that just because you didn't have a miscarriage at a young age, and God forbid, I hope nobody ever has to deal with that. Um, but sadly, there are people that deal with that. One in four women deal with a miscarriage. And it doesn't matter what age you have it at, you know, I just want you to know that my heart goes out to you and my love goes out to you and just know that I know you feel extremely alone but just know I'm willing to listen and if you need a hug I'm willing to give you a hug and a virtual hug because of COVID <laughs> um not to sound like a dick um but I'm willing to listen and you know hear you know, your experience if you're willing to share that, but just know that I am, I can be a good sounding board, but I know this is a heavy topic. I apologize guys, but I know that there has been a few emails 
about this. And I'm just glad that, you know, I can share my my story. And even though that, yes, it does make me sad, um, I'm also, I can smile and know that, you know, maybe in an alternate universe, those two beautiful souls are out there somewhere. I know that kind of sounds science fiction, but, you know. I just know that it wasn't my time and to be a mom and I just hope, you know, those souls are at peace and just know that I will always love them and carry them with me. Anyways, guys, remember, never give up, always keep fighting, you're enough, and you're very much loved. Until the next video, I love you guys. <coughs>